Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video I want to show you how you can set up data assets and how to use them. And they're super cool and they do a bunch of super awesome stuff. So before I show you how to do it, I want to show you how I'm using it in the GDXR VR template. So what I've got is this template has a bunch of different settings and variables and movement types that you can switch from. And the idea is that the user can easily access these and go through and modify it as you wish. So what I've done is in my blueprints folder, I've got a data file. And in here we have a actual primary data asset and a data asset itself, which works together to get those variables. So if I open up the primary data asset, we'll create one of these in a little bit. You'll see here on the left, I have a variety of variables and all of these variables are what I want exposed to our player. So the user can control them at runtime and between levels and set up their player how they want. So you can see here, we've got stuff like, the main one is movement type, which is an enum. And what that does is it allows us to have different settings. And I'll show you how I'm using these as well. So if we compile and save this, we can then open up our data asset. And you'll see it displays all of those variables for us here as we've got them. And what this does is it allows us to update the information for our player. We can reference this. So in my case, the main one is movement types. So I'll set this back to teleport. And inside of my VR pawn or character, I have a reference to our uh, primary data asset. So that's the first one with our references. If I don't lose it, because I close it now. So that's this one. So we call or create a variable called uh, primary data asset, whatever we've called it. And then in here, so in our VR pawn, we can select that variable and you can see we can add our data asset, asset table. And what that does is it allows us to drag this in and then we can actually get any one of those variables that we have in that data asset and it'll update based on what's called inside of that. So let's say we get max health, we can call this and we can have this set our player so we can cause damage through this. But if we went to our data asset and it actually just crashed, you'll be able to see how we can actually use these through it. So I just restarted the editor. But the thing is the data asset itself is persistent between levels. So these variables, once they're set, kind of act like a game instance. So you can change them and update them here and it'll store it between the levels. Um, the main issue that I found is data assets themselves can't be saved, but the individual variables can be, and then you can set them when you load your project. So hopefully you're seeing how these can be pretty powerful and can be used between different actors and levels, and you can duplicate these as well to create different types. So you can have, uh, let's say you've got an AI character. There's a whole bunch of variables that you want to set in there. You could have a data asset for AI1, data asset for AI2, and you can have them set to different things. So you, they're reusable as well, which makes them super powerful. So how to create these. So what we're going to do is we're going to close down this template that I'm working in. Now we're going to open up the Epic Launcher. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a first person template. So this setup is exactly the same no matter what template you use. It's just the logic that you've got to change. Or the way you the way you use it in your project is just going to be different. But the, the overall concept is exactly the same. So I'm going to use this so I don't have to put on the headset all the time. So now that we actually have our project started, we can run in here, we can jump around, we can fire still. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up our data asset to control some stats in our player. So what I'm thinking is we can do a new folder, all this data. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a Boolean value to stop our player from being able to jump. So we can right click. And what you want to do is go to Blueprint class, search for primary data asset. And this will be used as a similar thing to a game instance. It's going to store our variables of what we want to be able to access. So primary data asset, PDA for short, and then we'll call this character 
variables. And then in here, we can open this up and let's say we create a new variable. We'll keep this as a Boolean and we'll go can jump. Cool. So we've got can jump as a variable, it's a bool. By default, we want that set to true. And now what we can do is we can right click and we can go to miscellaneous and we can create a data asset. And in here, you'll have a bunch of classes you can choose from. And what we want is our PDA character variables. So we select this, so data asset underscore character variables. And if we open this up, you'll see that we have our can jump variable displayed to us, which we can turn on and off. So we'll keep that on. And in our first person, we want our blueprint for our player. And it's going to be our BP first person character. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for our jump section. So we have it right here. And let's say we want to disable our jump. What we can do is we can start with a branch and we need to access our data asset. So we can do that on the left. We can go to variables, create a new one. In the data asset variable, you might be tempted to search for data assets. So searching for data asset underscore character, but that won't actually show up, but you'll see that we get the, the primary data asset itself. So we've got primary data asset character variables. We want to do an object reference. We'll rename this to character variables. And on the right here, once we compile, we'll be able to access our data asset itself. So this one's reading the information from our data asset and we can use that. So if we drag this in, get, and then we do can jump. So get can jump. We can plug this into our VR form. Hit compile and save. So now if we jump in, we can pick up our weapon, we can still jump. But if I go to our data folder and open up our data asset and I disable this, when we jump in, I can press the space bar as much as I want and nothing's going to happen. So how can we use this? So can jump, we can turn that back on. Hey everyone, update from the future. So while editing the video, I realized I didn't mention this, is that when working with data assets, if you want to modify them at runtime and you set their information, as you'll see later on in the video, that information is stored between the editor versions as well. So if you escape out of your project, any, any variables that you've changed in your data asset while playing the game will stay as they are in the data asset. It doesn't save directly between games. So you will need to create a save system if you are changing any, anything in the data asset. But ideally you should really be using the data asset for stuff like settings that are only going to be changed once or twice the thing. You're not going to want, like I've got in my example, I've got health. It's not going to be in there. It's going to be moved to the game instance where it's going to be stored or a player controller. So you kind of want to keep that in mind. So the best way to use the game, the data asset itself is to only have variables in there that controls the default state and work from that. That works much better rather than updating stuff. But um, things like menus and stuff like that, you can use this if you want as well. And then you could export. So you could bring in your data asset into your game instance, or at least in theory you can. I haven't tried it yet. And then save out individual variables. So when you load a save game, you can populate the data asset with those saved variables. So that would be one way of saving it. But um, overall, the, the data asset and the, the primary data asset doesn't save as a whole. As a, as a whole file. So just keep that in mind while I go through the next steps and show you how you can edit those variables on the fly. All right, back to the video. We could go ahead and we could create a blueprint class. Let's call this an actor. So BP underscore uh, disable jump actor. And then we have a collision box. So box collision. We'll move that up. And then we'll put a little cube on the bottom just so we can see what's happening and more accurately see where we are. And we'll do that like so. So our box, we're going to use on overlap. So on begin overlap, we're going to check to see if our actor is equal to our uh, first person character. If it is, we're going to disable our jump. 
typically you could get our player pawn, so we could cast to our first person character. And then search for jump. And you could do stop jumping or can jump. And you could set that as you want. But we can do this without casting now. So in our variables list, we're going to search for our PDA. So character variable, primary data asset, rename to character info, hit compile, and then the drop down on the right, we search character variable. So we get a reference to this, and now we set can jump. So if our player overlaps our collision box, we set can jump to false. So if we drag this into our level now, we can get our weapon and we can jump as we normally do. And then once I overlap that, it did not work. So let's see if we're actually overlapping it properly. Don't think we are somehow. Oh, we are. Ah, so I double checked. It's not actually receiving the first person character. So there's no collision on that. It's been a while since I used the first person one. So let's do it so when we overlap without the check. So we jump in, we can jump like normal. And then once we overlap, I can no longer jump. So I can press the start and then go from there. And the best part about this is if we load a new level, it'll save that data asset as well. So it will have jump disabled. So you could do another one and then have this promote to a variable. Set this to public. So we've got one jump pad down here, which has can jump set to false. And let's say we have another one up here, which is set to can jump to true. And in our first person player, just so we know we're actually hitting our space bar, we will do it so we check. Let's call it jump disabled and then jump first person cool so once we press it you can see that we've got jump and it's actually disabled because it's persistent so we disable it and it's set it in our data asset so now if i want to enable it we can go over here we can jump and if we back out our data asset will be set to true but if we go back in and then we can jump again as soon as we overlap this, I can no longer jump. So jump disabled. And when I back out and go to data assets, you can see it's saved it. So it stores that information in the editor and in the level in between them. So there's a lot of power that you can get out of this and you can work with it how you want. And it also saves it between levels. So if you, if you like I've said, if you load up a new level with something modified or disabled, it'll actually keep it for you. So it's a super cool way of doing stuff and having that logic go between the player without having to so-called cast or do anything along their lines, especially if you're doing general checks, it works really well. So jump disabled, can't jump. But as soon as I hop over that, we can now jump again and then go over it and the same thing. So jump disabled. So this was, hopefully I didn't ramble too much. I think the idea is to just show you how data assets can be used to not so much cast but do checks and general stuff and information and also storing that info. And uh, one thing I believe isn't possible is to save this data or specifically save the data asset or the primary data asset between games in a save game. But what you could do is you could access this character variable inside of a game instance and you could save that variable. And then when the level loads, you could set it back to the character variable or the data asset to have it go that way. So this is just one way of using it. And hopefully that helps you kind of come up with some new stuff, things you can go from there so you can have player assets. So if I jump back over to our VR template and open up the data asset in here, you'll see how that I'm actually able to use this. So max walk speed, I can control that here, sprint speed. And I'm also looking at doing stuff like max health. So things that won't change and the player will always have accessible to them. The max health could be changed here. So if you get an upgrade, it could change it to 200. 
and then your current health would stay the same. And it can be read inside of your UMG as well. So all these variables can be accessed everywhere. The only thing they don't do is call the change. It's just when something else looks for it. So that's the thing to keep in mind. If something's looking for that data, it can access it. But if you're, let's say you're gonna take damage, you wouldn't have it go to your data asset and expect your UMG or anything like that to read this data on the fly. It's pretty much done as a background thing. So hopefully that really is enough rambling now and that helps you get started and it's just something cool that you can think about. I wanna say thank you to all Patreons for making these videos possible, especially with the help on the GDXA VR template, which we're working on here. There's other videos on the channel if you wanna see what this is. But if you're looking for any help, make sure to join the Discord and we'll be over there regularly so we can help you out. So yeah, until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.